In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this, an analog Hall Effect keyboard. Now, I designed this one to work with my void switches, but the same techniques and setup can be used for any uh, Hall Effect switch. So if you get some of those uh, cool input club silo switches, same exact stuff would apply. It just instead of putting the uh, Hall Effect sensor off to the side, you'd put it in the middle. That's it. <laughs> That's the big difference. So I'm going to show you how to make this. And in preparation for this video, I've completely blown away my uh, KiCad preferences. So we're going to get a fresh setup as if I was a total newbie to, Ki to KiCad, KiCad, however you say that. And we'll see how that goes. I've, it's been a long time since I've set up KiCad. So let's launch it. All right. Uh, we're just going to use the default settings. So hit OK. Uh, the first thing you want to do when, eh, when you get KiCad open for setting up a project like this is just create a new project. And by default, it creates a folder with the same name as your project. Um, so you don't have to like create a folder, then put your project inside there. It'll do that automatically. And I've created a directory just for this. We'll call it analog keyboard. And it should create a folder called analog keyboard in here. So now we've got two files in our analog keyboard directory. And I just want to point out that this is like a file listing. It's not just going to show you KiCad files. <laughs> um, so let's open that up. You can see that it's got our project. The only file it's not going to show you is the project file, which is the pro file. Okay, KiCad Pro. Uh, so we've got a PCB file and a schematic file. That's what that SCH stands for. Now, before we do anything else, we're going to want to import. Uh, we're going to basically want to clone a couple of Git repositories that I've made for, just for this purpose. The first one is the uh, Voice Switch KiCad library, KiCad, however you say that, uh, which has this nice footprint in it, and it also has a, a little placeholder symbol. And then we're we're also going to clone this, which because we're going to copy and paste out of it, <laughs> basically. Um, and we're also going to clone this uh, this uh, Black Pill repo that I made uh, that ha just has the um, it has a Black Pill symbol in it and a footprint. And you note that it has a staggered grid. That's just to make it easier for you um, when you're soldering. It holds the headers in place. <laughs> That's all. It's just nice. All right, so let's get started on that. Uh, I'm using uh, KDE as my desktop environment, and it comes with this great file um, browser called Dolphin that gives me the ability to open up a terminal right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a terminal here, and I'm going to git clone my... Uh, let's start with the... Uh, Void switch KiCad. And I'm just going to paste that right here. We're going to clone that, but we're also going to get clone that black pill repository. We're just going to copy it. And in case you missed that keyboard shortcut, I hit Control Shift V, but I'll just right click and paste this time. So you see, I'm just cloning it. Uh, and we're also going to grab the, um, the void switch. 65% because this is going to be a big time saver for you and for me making this tutorial because I already basically made this board. Why waste time remaking everything when I can just copy and paste? Same goes to you because that's what I want you to do. Just copy and paste right out of this baby. All right, so I'm going to clone that, but I'm going to clone it into a, into the parent directory because this isn't part of the tutorial. We're just gonna, Well, I guess I can put it in here. We'll put it in the main tutorial directory and not the project directory. And this time I type shift insert. <laughs> All right, so that's there. Let me just show you. If I go up a directory, yep, void switch, 65%. All right, back to the tutorial. So the first thing we want to do is set up our symbol libraries. And the way this works is, uh, well, we got a default setting here, just hit OK. Uh, you've got global libraries, which are specific to all your projects, like you, so if you wanted to like, uh, make a whole bunch of different keyboards and you didn't want to have um, have to put the void switch project uh, files inside each directory, you could make a global version here. But then if you go and post it to like GitHub later, it's going to be missing those directories, right? So missing those symbols and, and whatnot. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in our project specific um, uh, tab here. We, that means if we ever upload it to GitHub, so when they clone it, it'll actually have the um, necessary symbols and whatnot. So the first one we're going to do, I guess we'll do the black pill first. And you see it's got symbol. We'll just double click on that. And then we just double check the name because sometimes it 
kick it gives key cat gives it a weird name um we're also gonna make this a little bit bigger because sometimes it likes to put a weird path i don't know why i think it's like a a bug in the um keycat six. Oh, i forgot to add the other one let's go back there and manage symbol libraries now let's add the symbols for our void switch so we've got two symbols here one is the that little placeholder the void switch symbol and the other one is for the hall effect sensor um it's just a little nicer than the, you know, some of the ones that are built in the KiCad. Uh, so this is void switch. That's good. And let's add the 49E. And there we go. Now those are all set up. And the next thing we want to do is we want to add our footprint libraries. Just click OK here. And again, we're going to add those as project specific. Let's add the black pill footprints. And it's you see there's, no, there's nothing to click on here. It's because footprint, footprint libraries just look inside a directory where symbol libraries look inside the file itself. So we're just going to hit OK, or hit Open, I should say. And I noticed that when I did this last time, it added like the assets. Yeah, look at that. I don't know why it does that. This is the bug I was talking about. Why I did not tell it to do that. <laughs> so that's the directory we want. Just double check that. And another thing, too, is it give it the name images. We'll never find it that way. So let's just call it black bill. And let's add the footprint for the void switch. And this is just the, um, you'll note there's a whole bunch of them here. Like we got the the standard 1U, but then I've got size uh, for all the usual keyboard sizes. And there's also a QR code that points to the void switch repo and a couple of templates that you can use for that just help with laying out your keyboard. But we'll get into that later. And again, we want to rename this from footprints to something like void switch. Otherwise, we won't be able to, it'll be harder to find later. And it looks like it has the right path this time. Now let's open up the uh, schematic. Now the first thing we want to do is lay out our keyboard. Well, actually, before we do that, let me just show you how this works. So we've got a little icon here that lets us add a symbol. And let's do the black pill first, because that's real simple, right? Black pill ST link. And I would put that here, and then we could attach things to these pins, like wires and global labels and whatnot, but we're not going to do that. And this is why I had you. Um, clone the 65% <laughs> uh, keyboard repository. Let me open up this new tab. I just middle clicked on that. So this is our other project. Now, this is a cool feature of, of KiCad 6. I can open up the uh, project. Actually, I don't need the whole project. I can just open up the um, schematic here. And you can see this is the schematic for the uh, tutorial that I need to keyboard uh, source files. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and well, not right click. I'm just going to click and drag over here. I'm going to hit Control C to copy, and now I'm going to go into our project, and I'm going to paste it. <laughs> Look at that! We've got our microcontroller all set up. And if I click on it, I don't know why I've got a crosshair there. That must be some weird default. Uh, if I click on it, you should see that it's also got the footprint associated with it. So that when we go to the make the PCB, and we say update uh, PCB from schematic, it'll pull that all in automatically. And ditto goes for the uh, resistors and whatnot. It's really nice, this copy and paste into schematics feature. I love it. Uh, and while we're at it, let's talk about these resistors for just a second. These are pull-ups, which means they get tied to um, uh, you know, the, the voltage source. So they're not ground, the opposite, right? So the positive voltage source, they get tied to the pull-ups. And the only reason why I want you to include these is in case you do want to hook up like an ITC sensor or something like that you'll have them on the board and they'll be ready to go. And we'll add a quick connector, which is just a nice I2C connection that's pretty standard uh, later. Uh, the black hole doesn't come with these resistors, which is strange, honestly. Um, but this solves that problem. Right. So we just put a few on the board and it costs like nothing. These are like a tenth of a cent each. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Now let's go back to our void switch keyboard schematic. Just have a look at it for a second, just to talk about what's what we're going to put here. Right. Um, you can just copy and paste this and modify it. And I actually recommend you do that <laughs> because it'll save you a lot of tedious work adding all these labels. But just for the one, for this one uh, multiplexer, that's what this is, AM0 analog multiplexer. I'm going to do it from scratch so you can see how it's done. Right. So let's go over to our uh, schematic and I'm going to hit Control S to save it. Um, now let's add a 74HC4067. <clears throat> Uh, analog uh, multiplexer. 
And this is, we're going to use, so there's two of them here and you're like, what the hell's the difference? See what the difference is? From a symbol standpoint, they're exactly the same. But from a footprint standpoint, this one's just got a little bit tighter pin spacing. And this is the one we want because this is the one that's actually available right now, <laughs> the chip shortage. And, and it's a little bit smaller. <laughs> but other than that, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter at all. Uh, another thing we want to do, <clears throat> once we've added it there, is I'm going to hit E. And I don't want this U designator. I'm going to go with AM, right? Um, and now, because that's analog multiplexer, U is like the generic one for any chip. The next thing I want to do is I want to annotate. Uh, annotate schematic, and I'm going to say annotate, right? So the only annoying thing is that like this is going to be AM1, but in our firmware, it's like AM0. So we're going to edit that, and we're going to say AM0. Wait, solves that problem. And then we annotate others with AM question mark, AM question mark. Those will start at 1. So as long as this one's 0, all the rest will be fine. I'm going to M to move this a little bit. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? See, this is kind of a small sheet. That's kind of way too small. I don't like that. So let's let me show you how to fix that. Just go into the page settings. And we're just going to pick something a little bit bigger, like A2. That's all we got to do. Nothing else. And now we've got plenty of room here. Right. So let's go on, moving on. Let's add some symbols here. And let's talk about uh, how an analog multiplexer works for a second. It's not very complicated, but it isn't trivial. Right. So this COM uh, pin here, that's where our analog signal is going to go. It's going to basically, it's going to connect. We're going to do a pretend wire here. It's going to connect to some analog pin down here on our black pill, right? And what these are, these S0 through S3 are analog, uh, they're select lines. So they basically, all together, they decide what channel is going to be active. So if none of them are, they're all grounded, but they're all low, I should say, then you're going to get uh, pin 0 is going to be selected. But then we set uh, S0 to high, and then we get pin 1. And then it's like a binary, it's like a truth table associated with it. But you don't need to worry about any of that. Not in this, not, not here. That's that's my problem in the, as the firmware maker to worry about that. You don't need to worry about that. All you need to know is that these need to go to some pin, any pin. It doesn't really matter what pin on the microcontroller. Uh, but one thing to note is that the black pill has a pin out. And let me go back to the um, the black pill page here. So if, if you'll notice that you can't use on, on STM32 microcontrollers, you can't use every pin for every function. It's not like a, a Raspberry Pi um Pico, you know, or the uh, RP2040 chip, those you can use any pin for basically any purpose except for the analog pins, right? My STM32 is not like that. So as an example here, see these Mosey, Miso, SCK, these are SPI lines. But if I wanted to do SPI on like this pin, I couldn't do that because it's not an option on this microcontroller. I just, I just wanted to point that out uh, because it does make it kind of hard when you're trying to decide which pin to use for what purpose <laughs> on your keyboard. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the uh, SPI pins can be used for controlling uh, RGB LEDs like WS2812, 2811 protocol, that sort of thing. But some of these other pins won't work out for, so well for that. <laughs> and I learned that the hard way. Uh, so, uh, and I, I've already done all the hard work for you and I've created global labels, right? If I just click somewhere, you can see like PA5, this is PA5 and it's SCK, MISO, MOSI, right? And one that's missing over here is PB5. See, it's just says RGB LED. That's because that's the MISO or a MOSI pen, I forget, that is uh, good enough for controlling uh, the WS2811 protocol. And I've labeled all of these if you wanted to use them. And I've used the pins that are basically useless for other things or the least useful pins for the select lines. You see select zero is PC14. And if we look down here at the uh, pinout back here, let's find PC14, PC14. Yeah, it, it's uh, just another digital pin, and the only thing it can do is MISO2, but we're going to use MISO2 uh, elsewhere, right? So the, you can actually, there's actually multiple options for some of these ports. Like you, some of these, like this can be MISO1 or MISO3, I think, something like that. Um, but these PC whatever pins are not very useful. They can't be used for many things. They can't be tied to timers. They can't be a whole lot of things. PC13 goes to the LED on uh, the black pill, and you could use it. <laughs> <laughs> as I have in the past, but the only problem is then the LED starts flashing and blinking like crazy as you're, you know, selecting pins. It's, it's kind of a uh, annoying blinkage going on. <laughs> so we're not going to use that pin for that purpose here. But just know that I've already done all the homework here and select zero, uh, one, two, and three are all on pins that are less useful than other pins. So just, just keep that in mind and that the RGB LED pin is the one that 
I know works great for actually controlling RGB LEDs. All right, so moving on, let's get back to our actual schematic here. Uh, let's just add a label here, a global label. I believe that's this button here. Yep, global label. And we're just going to call it AM0. I'm going to hit R to rotate that baby. And this is going to be our output from this analog microcontroller, sorry, analog multiplexer. Uh, and actually, you know what? Before we do anything else, I'm a bit too early in the tutorial to talk about the reason why this is a global label and not something like this 5 volt symbol. <laughs> but just know that we're going to be using a separate um, power source for all of our um, components, like our sensors, because the 3.3 volt signal coming off of the black pill is not the greatest, right? It's not the greatest. So I've got, I've got them labeled specifically here. And that's why it's like that. So this is going to be our, our, our 3.3 volt um, power output from the black pill, this th quick one. But for everything else, we're not going to use that. We're not going to use that at all. We're going to use something else. And that something else is actually going to be, oops, wrong button, is actually going to be the 3.3 volt. Right, so we're just going to use regular 3.3. But instead of using that, we're going to say v VA. right? And the reason why is that A stands for analog. That way we can tell our analog from our digital. Quick is I2C, which is digital. And VA is our analog source. So for everything else, we're going to use basically everything but these two things right here, and that's it. We're going to use the VA symbol for our power. And then we also need a ground symbol, but there's already one right here. I'm just going to copy it. Right. So we, now our chip, our analog multiplexer has power and it has ground. Another thing we want to do is we want to put ground on the enable pin. That keeps it enabled all the time. We're not going to bother turning it off and on. It doesn't save us any power. It's kind of useless. I don't know why. It's, it seems like a legacy thing. I don't know if someone knows a good reason why this still has an enable pin other than just that's the way it was made originally. Let me know because I don't really see a purpose. <laughs> uh, we're also going to create select zero through... Um, three here. And I'm just going to hit insert since I put down a global label. Look at that. Insert, insert, insert. A little trick for you. Uh, and that's going to be important over here. And what that does in, in KiCad is it just increments whatever your label was and then pastes it right down below. Isn't that sweet? So now we've got a select zero. You, you can also name them S0 through S1, you know, S, S3 or whatever, but I, I give it a nice long name. That's up to you. And now we need, we're going to also label these similarly and this is just the way I do it. You can do it however you want for reference. Am0 colon 0, right? Because that is pin 0 here. And I'm going to put that there. And look at this. This is amazing. One, two. I'm just hitting the insert key. Bam. And now all of our labels are applied to our analog multiplexer, all 16 channels. Uh, and the way this works is, I know I didn't, I said you don't have to worry about it. But one thing you do need to know is that uh, when channel 1 is enabled, it's basically like a flip-flop. So... AM0 will connect to AM0 colon 0, this, this channel 0. It's basically a two-way connection, just as if you were to throw a switch, you know? Um, it's a two-way connection, and that lets our analog signal go through to the microcontroller. And these babies can switch really, really fast, faster than the microcontroller can flip them, right? So it can do a lot of channels, right? And this is, uh, the black pill is an 84 megahertz chip. It can read, uh, and the ADC runs at half that, so 42 megahertz. They can read all these in a whole lot more uh, in microseconds. So it's it's fast. <laughs> so even though we're multiplexing it, it's still really, really fast. All right, so that's how we that's how you set up an analog multiplexer from scratch. And now that we've done that and I've shown you, forget it. Let's just do this. Copy. Paste. <laughs> oh, and it looks like in the tutorial I used 3.3 volt. So rather than you know, fix all these and make them 3.3 VA. Let's just copy that. We'll just use 3.3, but you get the idea. This is for the analog stuff for the most part, right? And see how they're already AM question mark, AM question mark, AM question mark. So if I annotate right now, they should become AM1, 2, 3, 4, and that's that. Uh, another thing I want to point out, since it's right here in front of our faces, is what the heck is this all about? Why have I run channels 8 through 11 here to ground? And actually, 2 is to ground. And the reason for that is if you leave a pin floating on one of these babies, it can mess up the readings on nearby pins. So if this, so channel 2 here isn't connected, and 
because of that, if I didn't ground it, when the microcontroller goes and reads this channel, it does it so fast, it'll try and read this one and it won't come back um, as zero. It'll come back as like a half value. Uh, I don't know why that is. I think it's just like uh, capacitance or something. And then it switches over to three and some of that gets carried over, right? So there's like a, there's a little bit of power that comes through here and that gets carried over and it mess, it's going to mess up the signal reading on uh, this channel and it'll it'll cause the signal to wobble up and down by, by like you know 100 maybe 200 millivolts it's crazy how much it how much that impacts it but we solve that problem by just grounding unused channels and that's what that's all about so now you know and i've i've got an unused channel on a few of these uh, in theory, you'd probably want to leave like distribute it a little bit better, so that <laughs> better than I did. Maybe have one empty channel on each, just in case you want to hook something else up later um, to your design that needs an analog pin. I don't know. So this is actually the gist of our the complexity of our analog keyboard. That's it. Like we're we're almost done. Now we just need to put a bunch of analog Hall effect sensors down, and then give them these labels, right? So let's start by looking at how we did it over here in the tutorial, All right? And this is a 49E Hall effect sensor of E, you can see. Uh, oh, that's another thing. So see this, it says GH39FKSW. Don't worry about that. That's just an alternative to the 49E. It's the same thing. It's just uh, sometimes one's available and the other one isn't. And when I made this, that was what was available. <laughs> but they're basically the same. I've made keyboards with both the 49E and that weird part, and they both work fine. Uh, and this is that placeholder that I mentioned earlier. This is just, if I edit this, hit E, you can see it just it uses this void switch 1U SMD um, footprint, and it's just the, um, let's look at the symbol real quick. I'll edit symbol so you can see what it is. It's just a box. <laughs> it's just a placeholder so that when we're when we're looking at the PCB later, and we, we might do like a cleanup unused, you know, uh, footprints that don't have an associated with symbol, this makes sure that it stays, like our silk screen doesn't disappear on us. Uh, that's all it is. And another nice thing is you can lay it out like your keyboard is laid out. So you can see I've got escape, tab, caps, etc. You don't need to do that. You could just have a giant mess of symbols here if you really wanted to, and it wouldn't matter. But let's add one just to show you, right? Void, just to show you what it looks like. So we're just going to put one down here. And even though I, in this symbol, I put these this text in the center, for some reason, KICAD moves it over to the right. I'm sure you saw it just do that. It drives me nuts. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing that. So I move this one here. I'm just going to move this uh, centered here. Move this here. Something like that. So for reference, this is going to be, it's it's just a, it's just a, a um, it's just a reference. Like it's just meant to be. So I'll give you an example here. Um, let me look at this one. So this one is AM colon zero colon five. That means that the escape key on the keyboard is actually hooked up to this pin on the microcontroller. And why that is, like why isn't it num the first pin? The reason for that will become clear once we start putting the PCB together. It's not it's not as intuitive as you'd think it would be. And it does make it a little annoying in the firmware because then you have to map, it's not like a nice uh, thing of rows and columns like it would be in a traditional keyboard. You actually, you actually have this semi-complicated mapping where like your escape key is like, you know, the fifth element in an array. Uh, but that's another video. Uh, just keep in mind that they don't map physically to any particular order. They're kind of all over the place because you'll want to limit the distance from each key to the analog multiplexer and then also limit the distance from the analog multiplexer to the microcontroller. And that's from an analog design perspective. The longer the trace, the more voltage loss you're going to get and the more of an antenna it becomes getting a mess with your signals. So now you know why it's like that. Getting back to our, our own schematic, we added this void switch down, and this is just the reference. This is gonna be the, the name of it. So we'll call it the escape key, right, ESC. Is that not centered? Hold on. Center. I could have sworn I put the uh, in the symbol like that. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy and paste this a bazillion times you know, over to, to basically mimic our keyboard layout. This will be escape one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. And I could copy and paste this a bunch of times, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to do that. Here's what I'm going to do. And this is what I recommend you do too. Go over to, I already did all this hard work. Go, yeah, over here. Here we go. 
and we're just going to copy it. Just copy it. Save yourself some trouble. Right? And you might be thinking to yourself, but I'm not making a 65%. I'm making a full size. Well, if you're doing that, just put them over and add some more. Or you want to make a 60% or 40%, just, you know, just remove a row and relabel them. It's so much faster that way because I've already done the hard work of laying this all out. And you note that it doesn't have the symbols, like it doesn't have the associations. We're going to have to do that after anyway. So you can ignore these references until the until you get into the very end stage of this tutorial. Like we're not even going to care what these are because we're going to they're all going to be different, right? Does doesn't even matter. Don't worry about that. Well, we're going to go through and tediously rename every one of these at the end. <laughs> Cuz there's no better way to do it that I've found. Now let's add a hall effect sensor. So if you if you're in KiCad, you can add hall, right? And they've got like a bunch of Hall Effect sensors with a bunch of different symbols. And you could pick one that's got three pins and then use an SOT. Oh, there was one. So we could use an SOT 23 footprint with this weird symbol here. Or you could just use my 49E Hall Effect sensor one. And this one lays out nice. And the way this works is we're going to grab a... Oh, oh. Why? I don't know why it has a cross arrow on that. That's weird. We're just going to grab our power. We're going to put it here. And then we're going to grab a ground, copy. We're going to put it here. And for reference, if you just wanted to add a ground, you can just do it here, TND. And then you can add it that way. That's where that comes from. And I just remember that I never really showed you how to do that. Now, let's pretend this is our escape key. We knew that it was going to be cooked up to AM5. So I'm just going to copy this global symbol here. And bam. Now, that's how you do that. And another thing I like to do is give it a nice little label, right? So that way we don't forget what each thing is what. And let me make it a little bigger. The yeah, line left is fine. All right, now we know this is escape. Let's make it a little bit bolder. There we go. I'm going to hit Control S to save. Now, this will we'll want this to correspond to the layout we have up here. And remember, these are just little placeholders, right? that give us a, um, well, it'll be it'll make more sense later when we're doing the PCB. But just know that it's just a little placeholder and that this is really the important part, this footprint that is on there. In, in theory, you wouldn't even need to do these. You wouldn't even need to lay these out. But because of how uh, workflows work in KiCad, KiCad uh, it's way too easy to accidentally delete footprints that you've added in, in the PCB layout that you don't have a footprint for, that you don't have a symbol for, rather. So we do this to make sure that we don't lose anything later when we when we do like a board cleanup or something like that, and we're, and we're screwing around. That's the only reason why we have these. And then the rest of the time, this is really all we care about, right? We only care about that we have one Hall Effect sensor per switch. And let's have a look at our um, tutorial board here for a second. I'm going to Control-B to make the uh, ground flow go away. We'll get into that. And I just want to point out that this sensor, you know, it could be any one, is separate from this footprint. You see that? So I'm going to move the footprint out of the way. Move it way up here. And I'm going to move the sensor separately. See how they're, they're not the same, right? And we're going to do this part next. We're going to lay out our keyboard, right? And there's not much to lay out, actually. Uh, it's just a bunch of sensors. And before I forget, let's add some fiducials and our screw holes, right? Just to the schematic. And the way you do that... Actually, let's go to the, this one is what we want. Let's just go over here to our symbols and we'll go with um, screw, to, no, it's not, it's not screw hole, it's mounting hole, mount. Yeah, there we go. And you, you can do mounting pad, mounting hole. I like mounting hole, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna put a bunch of them here and hit edit and then we gotta find a good footprint. I like the, uh, I don't like to use uh, M2 screws, like, so a lot, of, a lot of keyboards use M2 screws. They're, they're way too small and annoying. And if I drop one, forget it, right? So I'll, we're going to use M3, but feel free to use whatever you want. Um, screw, what the hell is it? <laughs> I don't remember where it is. Uh, mounting, well, let's look here. Let's see what it is here. We'll look at this footprint. I'm going to edit it. Um, say change footprint, that'll tell us. So it looks like it's mounting hole and then mounting hole three, two. All right. So it's going to be under M. Mounting hole, there it is. 
So, you know, a lot of keyboards use this M2 connector. I don't like M2 screws, but feel free. That's, this is entirely preference. And I like the, um, I think the DIN 65 one. Yeah, one of these with the, with the pad. Yeah, this is the one I like. Um, and we don't, we're not going to hook that pad up to ground or anything like that. And the reason is when you hook up a, your grounding plane to like an external ground, like the case or something like that, it can act as an antenna and screw with your analog signals, right? And uh, you, we don't want that, right? So we're just going to copy this. And we're going to paste it a bunch of times. Can we insert that? Can we just do insert? Yeah. Well, wait, did it get the right footprint if I do that? It did. Okay. And you might be wondering, why am I putting so many down here? It's because... I zoom out a little bit. Let me just undo, undo, undo. If you just do the four corners, then the center of your keyboard is going to flex a whole lot when you're pressing hard <laughs> on, on H or someone on the internet is wrong and you're typing in all caps. And over time, that could cause these pads and stuff to get loose. So we don't want that. So we just want a little bit of support in the center for that to prevent that sort of problem, right? You know, prevent PCB flex. I don't know, a lot of people like PCB flex, and if you're using through-hole components, like regular switches, it doesn't matter as much. Since we're using uh, SMD surface mount components, it can matter a little bit more, but these things are teeny tiny, so honestly, it probably doesn't matter. I'm going to admit it. But just to be safe, I like to put um, a few extra holes. So how many are like Eight holes. So we've got four corners and then four in the middle as support, you know, support structures for the center, just so we don't, you know, over time, flex away and cause things to break. That's that's all there is to it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's add two more. Seven, eight. All right, there we go. And let's annotate those babies. We don't really care. For reference, the these annotations are totally relevant. They don't matter at all. And now let's add fiducials. And you're like, what the hell is a fiducial? Right? A fiducial is just a little dot. <laughs> That's really all it is. And before we make another one, let's pick a, um, a footprint. And I actually, I did some research on this and there is actually like the best, where did I put them? Put them over here in the tutorial. And we're going to use this one, the one millimeter one with a two millimeter mask. And I'll, I'll explain that why that is in a moment. Fiducial. It's because research and studies, like actual scientific studies, have figured out that that is the ideal fiducial size. <laughs> but what is a fiducial? What is, what's it for? Let's have a look at my uh, tutorial PCB here. And you'll see, if I just click somewhere, it's like this one here. Let me scroll over a bit. Here we go. So there's one here, there's one here, and there's one uh, down here, right? The key when placing fiducials is to make sure that if you flip the board over, there's no way that it would be confused as to what side it is. So you don't want them to be like equilateral uh, because what happens is there's inspection software that goes on the, P when the PCB is being manufactured and when and it's being assembled, the fiducials allow that software to, to align things really precisely. And you might think to yourself, well, modern machines don't need that, but it's often the case that something goes wrong with your PCB assembly and then someone has to pull your board out and put it back through the machine so that it can get assembled properly. And when they do that, they have to use some sort of alignment, right? My board has these screw holes in the middle, so they might choose something like that. But if they've got fiducials, they basically just push a button and bam. Now it's all automatically set. It doesn't matter how they place it in the machine. The inspection software will be able to align everything and make sure that when it places these 0.1 millimeter pitch parts that they line up properly. So it's like a safety mechanism to put the fiducials on there, always put them on there even though technically they're not necessary anymore because when they run it through initially, they'll have fiducials on like a connecting board. So like when your board is cut, they'll have a V groove here on the top of the board. And then up above here, they'll have fiducials and the same thing will go for the sides and the bottom, right? So it'll have fiducials whether you want them or not. But like I said, if they've already cut it or something went wrong, it got caught and uh, it broke off of that little like um, driver bit of PCB that connects it to the, to the sides, then they'll have to run it through the machine again by hand and having those fiducials there make sure that that, get, that goes properly and you don't get a board that's messed up in the end. So that's why we have fiducials. But really, it doesn't matter where you put them as long as they're asymmetrical and 
that's it. <laughs> and you want to space them out a bit, right? That's it. That's the only reason why we have them. All right, so I'm going to save this. Um, and we can put labels here later. Annotate. All right, let me see if I forgot anything. Oh, I did. Let's get rid of this and just copy it from our analog keyboard tutorial. <laughs> because why would we want to do this if we don't have to? And if you're doing your own keyboard and you want to add different keys, just copy and paste one of these, add it over, and then change the global label. Because uh, once we start making the PCB itself, uh, you know, KiCad's going to just barf them all out into the PCB. We're going to have to lay them out by hand anyway. So uh, just add as many or remove as many as you want. I already copied them. Let's paste them over here. All right, key sensors. Good enough. Let's run annotation again. And for reference, these will end up with like, you know, uh, U1, U2, U7. It's irrelevant. Don't even worry about it. Doesn't matter what they what these U labels are. We're not even going to use it. We're going to rely on this, these labels that we've made. Okay, that's a good stopping point. Uh, in part two, we're going to cover the PCB uh, layout, um, and then later we're going to come back and add a few more things to the schematic. But for now, the schematic is basically done. Um, so see you in part two.